So it was the 2000 guineas at the weekend, a race that we've been looking forward to on the channel for months on end. And everybody's talking about one horse. No, not the winner. One that finished ninth of 11 starters. And of course, that is City of Troy. We did a lot of talking about him beforehand on this channel and across the industry. And they're doing a lot of talking about him after, despite going off four to six for the 2000 guineas and being beaten fair and square. And it's as simple as that, really. He just underperformed. Very, very disappointing. We might have explanations and excuses coming out in the week, but he went off short and he got beat. Simple as that. I wanted him to win. I wanted him to be great. I didn't have a penny on. I'm not talking from my pocket, but he ran badly, and that's pretty much all you can say. I do love the Ballydoyle operation more than most. I do a lot of talking about Aidan O'Brien and his stable, a lot of backing his horses, reading between the lines. It would probably be my mastermind subject on horse racing if I had to choose one. But there is no other operation or team that is offered as much chance to explain or excuse poor performances with very little challenge from the media, really. City of Troy was disappointing on Saturday. Very, very disappointing. We move on. But talk of problems in the stores. I mean, it is pushing the envelope for me, to be fair, in the terms of an explanation. Watch it back. Watch City of Troy back in the 2000 guineas. I might watch 50 races a week, maybe more in the flat season. And there is absolutely nothing to see here in terms of City of Troy's behaviour before and during and leaving the stalls. Nothing unusual at all. I mean, I don't really know what to say. Like any other start from any other horse you might watch every day of the week. He went in, got, got himself organised. Ryan got himself organised. Gates opened. Boom, away we go. He didn't rear up. He didn't duck down. There's just nothing to see here. I mean, yes, he was the last to load. And Aidan O'Brien has said that in interviews since the race, that he was the last to load. But how many big name Ballydoyle horses have you seen loaded last over the years? Come on. I've not got the stats on it. I wish I did. But it is definitely more often than not, put it that way. A, a big Aidan O'Brien slash Coolmore horse loading last. It happens all the time. So when it happens and it goes wrong, i.e. the horse doesn't, doesn't win, I don't think we can bl be blaming that. I mean, look, of course, Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien know more about horses' behaviour than me. They know more about City of Troy than I ever will. But visually, absolutely nothing to know about City of the City of Troy in the stores at all. In the race itself, he was beaten four furlongs from home. He was near the front in the early part of the race. I think that some horses, a lot of the leading contenders, particularly drawn over that side, made a beeline to get behind City of Troy and not let him get out of sight. Hartem did go upsides him, but the likes of um, Rosalian, the eventual winner, notable speech, and others deliberately, you could see, were getting behind City of Troy. Not to stop him winning or not to stop him doing his thing. Obviously, there was him behind him, but they wanted to make sure that they wasn't too far away from a horse that had the potential to lead possibly all the way. He didn't get very far. He was well off the bridle at about the four furlong pole, and the race was pretty much over there, really. Um he didn't race like there was something amiss. You know, we saw Brian Moore pull up August Rodan um, pretty much in the Guineas last year and also over in Dubai recently. He certainly wasn't of that kind of pulled up nature. He was just very, very flat and disappointing. There'll be reasons for that, of course, that maybe we don't know him at the moment. But the stalls, for me, st certainly wasn't one of them. Has he trained on? We don't know for sure, but it didn't look great, did it? Let's be honest. Was it too bad to be true? An off day where he can bounce back, maybe. We'll find out on the next time he runs. But, I mean, like I say, there was no real excuse in terms of injury, what uh, struck into like August Rodan was last year. It was just very, very flat and very, very disappointing. Now, C City of Troy on Saturday in the minutes before the 2000 guineas, as they were parading, actually, I was checking the exchange. He was matched at 5-4, to 2.2 on the exchange for the derby just minutes before the Guineas was due to run. I could hardly believe it, to be honest. That was for the Derby, the Epsom Derby. Um, then he was out to eight on the exchange following his defeat. Again, finished ninth of 11. Then on Tuesday, there was a bit of a market collapse, to be honest, on City of Troy for the Derby itself. Six to one in tu on Tuesday morning, generally. And by by 24 hours later on Wednesday morning, he's now four to one. Sometime, uh, uh, some places even shorter, seven to two for the Derby. Um, crazy, absolutely crazy, if you ask me. I mean, it's great at the same time. It's great for punters, I think, and punters like me, that with City of Troy, looks likely he's going to the derby now, as was the original plan. Great, because 
I've said previously before, I said it before the race, and I'll say it again after, he's not a Derby horse for me. I can't have him. And as a result, he will set up the market. Now, comparisons have been drawn between City of Troy in 2024 and August Rodan in 2023. August Rodan last year in the 2000 Guineas beat one horse home um, before going off a pretty well back 9-2 to two, and winning the Derby at Epsom on his very next start. But this is completely different to me. The two completely different horses. August was a Derby horse from his two-year-old days. Absolutely no doubt about it. Look at his breeding. All racing post-trophy winners, as I've said on the channel before, should and still are considered Derby horses, even though a lot of them have rode in the Guineas. But a lot, most of the time, a Racing Post Trophy winner or contender is a Derby horse in waiting uh, for the next season. That's what August Rodan was. City of Troy is not a Derby horse for me, never has been. I said it many times on this channel. And yeah, he just looks too fast to me. Looks, He was absolutely excellent last year with his pace, with his electricity. He just doesn't look a Derby horse to me. And he certainly doesn't after finishing ninth of 11 in the Guineas. Um, but yeah, go back and check. I have definitely said not a Derby horse for me. He looks way too quick. But what do I know? Aidan O'Brien has said that the plan remains the same. Epsom is the next start for City of Troy. And anti-post-market support will definitely back up that that is very much the plan at this stage. There is less than a month ago until the Epsom Derby, which this year is on June the 1st. I think this is great news, as I just said a few seconds ago, because it will make the market. City of Troy will be favourite. He won't be winning, in my opinion, and will provide value to everything else in the market. That's the plan anyway. I mean, there's a video on this channel, which some people may question in the comments, that is titled City of Troy, the most exciting horse since Frankel, with a question mark. It was a question mark rather than a statement. Um, but, well, that answer has pretty much been that question has pretty much been answered well and truly after um after the guineas on saturday but i was on the hype train no doubt about it don't get me wrong he was the most exciting horse coming into a three-year-old campaign since frankel for me and that can still be true he was absolutely brilliant as a two-year-old and spent months flat fans spent months looking forward to the return of city of troy unfortunately it's been a disappointing return um, and that statement can still be true City of Troy was the most exciting horse since Frank Hall for me in terms of a two-year-old looking forward and bringing excitement into his three-year-old campaign. It's not started very well. I mean, it could. I was hoping, as I said at the start, I was hoping that he would win and you know set the set the flat season alight. There isn't many headline acts really to look forward to other than this one, um, but that looks unlikely now given what we've seen on Saturday. We should talk about the winner of the 2,000 Guineas where we are. We're seven minutes in and we've not even mentioned really the winner of the 2,000 Guineas. That was notable speech and he didn't fit many of the trends. He didn't run at two. He made his turf debut in the Guineas itself, which is pretty amazing. Drifted wildly on the day. He opened the, in the morning on the exchange, maybe around 16, 18 on the exchange. Two minutes before, or even one minute before, notable speech was available at 34 on the exchange. Came in a little bit. He was available at the back end of the 20s, I think 28, something like that, was his BSP. But notable speech was mega, mega impressive. Nonetheless, travelled like a dream in a strongly run race, able to maintain that pace and that um, speed much better towards the closing, uh, in comparison to the others, able to maintain that speed in the closing stages, ran straight as an arrow. I thought that was impressive, particularly at Newmarket, these young and notable speech and inexperienced horse coming in and out the dip, ran straight as you like. And given that that was only his fourth career star and the first on the on the turf, we can expect much more to come, potentially, from notable speech. He does look ideal for the St. James's Palace at Royal Ascot, where Charlie Appleby has said he will go round the bend. And that's where his store can pounce tactics with notable speeches. Turn of foot could well be seen to best effect. I would fancy him to be uh, winning the uh, St. James's Palace at Ascot, pretty much regardless of the opposition, to be honest. And in that opposition, my mate Rosalian was second in the Guineas, ran a cracker, to be fair, let's have it right. As City of Troy fell away, your eye was drawn to the centre of the track where those yellow colours with the black dots, Rosalian travelling really, really well. He looked to be ready on a plate, but not notwithstanding, notable speech over that far side was uh, travelling equally as well and quickened up the better up the up and out the dip but rosalian being by blue point has got to be a i've got a fear and question mark he doesn't quite stay a mile 
Richard Hannan disagrees with me and he's sticking to the mile races for now with the Irish Guineas, possibly on the radar, but Royal Ascot definitely on his radar. He could definitely, he could do both and let's hope he does. And his stable mate, Hartem, who finished third in the 2000 Guineas, is also looking at those races as well. So there's plenty to look forward to, but everyone is talking about City of Troy. What did you make of it? A big talking point. He's gone off four to six, the first odds on favourite for quite a while. Um, I think Pinatubu was odds on as well. But before that, we're going back to Frankel. Disappointing, but still, the derby remains the plan for City of Troy. And remarkably, even after that effort, his favourite. But we have seen a couple of potential derby contenders fall away, even today at Chester, where Grosvenor Square was disappointing. He was as short as 12-1 to 1 for the derby for the Aidan O'Brien yard. He was disappointing in the Chester Vars. Um, and the winner of that race, very, very unfortunately, Hidden Law, suffered a fatal inju injury just moments after crossing the line. He just won the Chester Vars by, I think it was over six lengths. Really impressive for the Godolphin team. But unfortunately, he's not going to be running in the derby now. And as we look forward to this weekend, the Linkfield Derby Trials, then into next weekend, the Dante, etc., Looks a pretty wide open picture in the derby. City of Troy looks like he's going to run in the derby. He'll make the market. Surely he's not a derby winner. Maybe I'll be wrong. Plenty to look forward to. And really, the season is probably getting up and running now on the flat. We've had plenty of winners as well over the weekend. The SD and myself were smashing in winners all over the place. SD in particularly good form. And he is in front of me at the moment. But we're both well in front for the season so far. Remember, our season here on Racers Now, the flat started on the 22nd of March for us and we're both showing healthy profits, as you can see on screen there. But plenty to look forward to and we'll be back on Thursday for the usual slot and with that man, SD. Thanks for tuning in.